Jaguar F-Type 2.0 liter 2017 review. The Jaguar F-Type 2 seat coupe gains a punchy 2.0 liter turbo petrol four-cylinder engine and, it's claimed, greater agility for less money. Is it too good to be true? What is it? The Jaguar F-Type 2.0 liter is described as the feisty young brother by Jaguar. Which is both encouraging and slightly worrying. Have you ever spent any time around a younger brother who could broadly be defined as feisty? Annoying, isn't he? But, yes, it sounds encouraging, too. The F-Type 2.0 liter marks the arrival of Jaguar's four-cylinder Ingenium engine in 296 bhp petrol form, so here it gets plonked into Jaguar's sports GT car. You could think of it as downsizing, which usually turns out okay, as with Ferrari and Mercedes AMG, for example, but sometimes doesn't. There's the reassurance here that, if you don't like it, the bigger engines, V6S and V8S, stay on sale, too. You might remember the four-cylinder engine in a six-cylinder car idea from such projects as the Porsche 718 Cayman. The biggest problem with the four-pot in the German car is the way it sounds. A single tailpipe, rather than several, visually marks the 2.0 as it drops into the front of an F-type. It drives the rear wheels only, and through an 8-speed automatic gearbox only. There's no four-wheel drive or manual box option for the 2.0. Jaguar's engineers declined to say if they've tried a manual. It wouldn't surprise me if they had and I'm sure it'd be even lighter again than this car, which is 52 kilograms lighter than the V6. But while a light, stripped out, manual variant sounds the kind of car that people like us love, it also sounds like one nobody would buy. The 52 kilograms reduction here pretty much all comes in the nose. When we road tested a V6 F-Type, we found it weighed 1755 kilograms, of which 52% was over the front, so although the four-pot will remain very marginally forward biased, it should make a sizable difference to the way it drives. Jaguar's engineers will discreetly tell you that this is their preferred F-Type when it comes to handling, in the same way that, with the old XK, the 5.0-liter naturally aspirated V8 was preferable to the supercharged cars, because it was quick enough yet felt that bit more agile when you turned. We're testing a coupe although a convertible, only 20 kilograms heavier, it's claimed, is available, too. As standard, you get 18 in wheels, again, a format that Dynamics engineers quite like, but go for our Dynamic trim, which this is, rather than the base model and you get 19s, with 20s an option. What the 2.0 also doesn't get is adaptive dampers. But, again, there's the engineering wink and nod, this car is just dandy without them. What's it like? So let's see. The V6S and V8S in F-types usually fire with a real visceral bark, spinning up to around 3000 revolutions per minute. Apparently, they all do it, these engines even in Range Rovers, and need to, as part of a clean start process. But the exhausts just make the sports cars far more audible. The four-pot is that bit more restrained, as you'd expect. If you have easily irritated neighbors and early starts, perhaps this is the version for you. If you like your sports cars or GT cars to sound rich, powerful and expensive, though, perhaps it isn't. How best to describe the sound? Very obviously not a V6 or a V8, I suppose, which is the trouble with 4s. The combustion note of a 4, especially a turbocharged one that doesn't rev to the heavens is, typically, so plain that you're left chasing tricks to try to up the ante. It has worked here, to an extent. There's an active exhaust, and some pops and burbles on the overrun if you flick the switchable exhausts mode to angry. There's some semi-raucous growl as you accelerate, too. And there's some sound augmentation through the loudspeakers, although it's so subtle that you'll hardly realize it's there. Look, it sounds fine. But it sounds like a four-pot and, as with a Porsche 718, that's just not very exciting. 
There's nought wrong with the power delivery, mind you. Peak torque comes in early, from just 1,500 revolutions per minute, and hangs around until 4,500 revolutions per minute. Peak power is only at 5,500 revolutions per minute, so this isn't a car you need to thrash to get the best from it. It mates well with the auto gearbox, although it would be interesting to try it without because decent auto boxes, and this 8 speed is one, can mask inconsistencies in engine response. But this is good. Jaguar claims a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 5.4 seconds, which I don't doubt the car will do, but it seldom feels like a 5 something car. Anyway, you can add 0.3 seconds to that for the 62 miles per hour time, which leaves the Jaguar in the territory of the Honda Civic Type R, a car that is not only more powerful and lighter, but also nearly 20,000 pounds cheaper. A coupe isn't the place to go if you like studying statistics. But, then, it never was. It isn't with a Toyota GT86 which looks poor value next to a hot hatchback but is still a car you should buy over one. A coupe should give you the knowledge that this bespoke package was designed specifically to make you feel all gooey inside, because it's better than any saloon-derived car to look at, which is true here, sit in, which although it may be the entry-level F-type, the interior doesn't leave you feeling short-changed is true here, and drive. So let's come to that. Soon after you set off, the decrease in weight at the nose is discernible, even if it has been a while since you drove a bigger engine def type. Front and rear spring rates have been reduced by 4% and 3% respectively. The valving of the dampers has also been adjusted and Jaguar's engineers will tell you this is as much about learning from what they've done to other F types as it is about optimizing for this particular car's weight. They've just got better at tuning it, in short. And they've tuned it well. The ride is composed, secure and damped with a pleasing honesty and consistency. Potholes don't crash, crests and bumps don't make it float or sag. And the F-Type turns with conviction, although it hardly felt nose-heavy before, and true agility. The F-Type's electric power steering remains smooth and slick, accurate and responsive. At least, it does until you notice it has a bizarre, and unusual, drama lining mostly under braking, where the steering gives small but frequent little tugs at the wheel, like a fish threatening a bite on a fishing rod. The steering gets its own tune for the 2.0, and there's torque vectoring, which can break an inside rear wheel to mitigate understeer, but, still, I'd be astonished if the tram lining was the intentional result of that. Pity. Maybe it's tires, or pressures, or something about those roads, but all the test cars did it, so it wasn't just one badly set up car, up car.